day three at Interzoo 2018 and I've made my way straight to the Aquaflora stand. I was really excited about seeing this stand. Uh, Philippe Oliveria is the aquascaper here. Let's just take a look at the awesome scapes. So the first thing we see is this beautiful, looks like a 150 centimetre Iwagumi style. Classic U-shaped composition. Lit with the Twin Star 600 SPs. Let's just go through the plants. So we have Rotala Hra, the red plant there. There's some Ludwigia palustris, which is the super red one there. And then it looks like Juncus repens, which is the grassy taller plant. And then we've got the Gratiolia on the left, that beautiful tight stem plant. And then we've got a carpet of Eleocaris mini mixed in with some Marsalea hirsuta. Open foreground, some nice graded gravels to give this really naturalistic appearance. And it's almost mimicked on the other side with the planting. Great stonework. I think this is called Sea Mountain, this type of stone. Uh, beautiful scape. Okay, now we have a, it's like a AZA 60P style. Again, another Iwagumi. Same type of stone. So we have some Buca Philandra there attached to the rock. We have some, it looks like, tissue cultured uh, Pagostum and Helferi there in the centre. Uh, mini hair grass again, Eleocaris mini. Um, some little um, touches of moss. And this is a really nice plant. This is a uh, Bulbitis deformis, which is, I find, very tricky to grow. Uh, it tends to uh, really struggle, I find, underwater. And then we have some Anubius petite. This looks like it's uh, almost been planted fresh, but still, nevertheless, a really stunning layout. Okay, this is so cool. Look at this one. So this was scaped by Sasha Hoyer, German aquascaper. Uh, shallow tank, obviously, looking like it's about 50, 50 centimetres, I say. Uh, it's only about 20 centimetres tall. And then the main event is all this emergent growth. Absolutely stunning. And then to get the full impression, you have to really kind of stand back. So it's actually rock dragonstone here. It's protruding from the aquarium. A hygrophila pinnitifida there in the centre. We've got loads of the hydrocotyle species to pan or tripartia and this looks like a look might looks like a Lismachia maybe or even a Ludwigia and then we de this is definitely Ludwigia palustris we've got some interesting Buca phalandra there some more hygrophila pinnitifida loads of mosses but yeah really cool scape Another beautiful scape. This looks like 180 centimetres. Island style scape. Beautiful mixture of stem plants. We have a almost a chaotic mixture, but it really works. Really naturalistic appearance. So a carpet of Liliopsis, Brasiliensis by the look of it. Uh, we have some mosses. Again, the Hygrophila pinnitifida. Uh, Cryptocarini balansi, the tall plant there. A Ludwigia palustris. Uh, we have Ludwigia repens, some Juncus repens, um, some Staragyni. This is really cool. I'm guessing this is a CO2 reactor of some description. Um, possibly uh, ELOS design, I'm thinking. I'll have to ask the, uh, the organisers of the stand what this is. Some beautiful Congo tetras. Really nice. Ah, no, th that, this is the filter inlet here, and this must be the filter outlet, and I'm guessing the bubbles are just uh, the CO2. Ah, no, what is this? Yeah, it must be the CO2. 
Ah, I see. It's coming out of the nozzle there. You can see on the right-hand side of the tube. So it looks like it's got an inline CO2, and that's the filter outlet. And then we have additional circulation uh, with the power head up there. AI prime lights. These are quite new to the scene, the freshwater version. Um, might be trying one out at home at some point, so keep an eye out for that. And the scape is viewable from four sides, so now we're viewing it from the right-hand side. I think this view looks great. And then viewing it from the rear as well, it's escaped by itself. So we have uh, lots of exposed wood, which looks great. Uh, Anubius there in the shade. A few different types of Anubius there. Looks like the Coppifolia, we've got the Pangolino, the regular Nana, Anubius Petite, uh, some lovely Buca Volandra. Yeah, stunning aquascape. Love it. Now, if you're a saltwater fan, this will blow your mind. Absolutely stunning display tank on the Dijon stand. Look at these aquaporas. Absolutely incredible. I dread to think how much money's worth is in this tank. We've got some super rare fish as well in here. So Dijon are a, uh, a marine wholesaler very well known in the industry, really, really high quality livestock. So it's a cube style footprint, it looks around, I want to say, two metres, maybe two and a half metres, eight feet, and it looks about 80 centimetres tall. Uh, look at these colours guys, I don't, the, the camera's not really doing them justice, but absolutely stunning. But the show's getting super busy now, so just excuse the background noise. So I'm not a saltwater expert, um, so I can't tell you what all the corals are called and like the, the noise with the plants. You don't really need to know what they are, you can just see that it's an absolutely stunning display. I think this is called a brain coral for obvious reasons. A load of LPS, large polyp stony corals, a load of SPS, small, small polyp stony, some softies. Those are beautiful Amphius fish. That's absolutely stunning. There's so much to look at. It's worth doing a whole video dedicated to this aquascope, I would say. This is really nice. Just a plant holding system. Really quite a simple design, but really effective. We've got a submersed portion down here, and then we've got the immersed stuff growing hydroponically. So I'm here on the main ZZF stand and we have some beautiful shallow aquascapes, aquascapes by the legendary Oliver Knott and these are run using the Pantarai flow to go system which I will explain a bit later on but really cool aquascapes, really different, this is really cool. It has like an upper section with a waterfall. Some Buca Philandra, Echinodorus, some different mosses. And then we have another larger tank over here. Again, this is a beautiful scape. Similar kind of style, Nubius, Buca Philandra, mosses, all kind of low maintenance plants. Just a bit different, we've got the Kessel lighting there. So, let's go and speak with the man himself. So, 
Uh, this is Oliver, not everyone, the legend. The legend? Oh, thank you very much, George. <laughs> so, um, Oliver, can you just uh, explain the Pantarai kind of system, the flow to go, and a little bit about the aquascope? Yes, okay. Uh, you, you see here there's a prototype. We combinate the, the flow to go tank with the waterfall, so at the basement is a stream tank so we have two pumps and the water uh, will pump like a circle in the in the upper tank or the, the tank down and we having now around a stream about 15,000 liter the hour you see the the notropsis are acting a little bit like small droughts uh, and the other notropsis they, they are sitting in the stream so they are they enjoy the the more flow uh, and we try to combine a little bit the, aqua, the aquascaping um, items to create a biotope. Something. It's, a, it's a mix, maybe a biotope mix with aquascaping. And then we place this aquarium on the flow to go tank and we uh, have two pumps, two Panther Ray pumps. And we have also, I think from the other side you can see this good. Yes, yeah. We have two pumps here and one pump here, and we having actually around fifteen thousand liter coming over the waterfall. Fifteen thousand liter. Yeah. Hours. So uh, fifteen thousand liter per hour is over over the waterfall and down the stream also fifteen thousand. So then, then you and the most interesting is the sound of the waterfall. If everybody is out here in the morning. And you close your eyes, you feel like <laughs> you, yes, in 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 the forest with a river. So it's amazing to to hear the sound. And uh, this is, but you only can create this if you have a lot of water coming down. I think, I think that's the key. Yeah. No. Um, what's the fish species? Notropsis crossomus. It's a, a rainbow shiner from yeah. North America. And they prefer it really cold water? Ye yes, cold. Uh, they are a cold water fish, but you can also keep them a little bit warmer. But uh, it's very easy to keep. But you see, this this fish loves the stream. Loves the flow. The yeah, yeah. Level. And, and uh, yes, and um, it's completely different to normal tank. You having. Um, a dynamic in a tank, you know, uh, the, the fish you react completely different, like um, like a normal thing. They like, but uh, they like in nature. They're, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you you the you behavior see, is yeah, much you, more natural, right? Yeah, as you see this in the Pandare shop, this yeah. the it's completely beautiful and, shop, yeah. isn't it? And I think uh, we we can create a new kind of um, uh, not a new kind of business, but a new kind of um, scene to um, so a biotope aquascaping scene. Yes, yes, yeah. 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 So that's Oliver. Thank you so much, thank Oliver. You thank much. you for your time. I know you're a very busy man. A, thank you and have a great show. Keep on escaping. Thank you. Keep on escaping. Cheers, <laughs> <laughs> mate. Okay, guys, that wraps up for today's video. Hope you enjoyed that. Really loved this one. Really cool to interview Oliver and obviously the beautiful aquascapes on the Aquaflora stand. And not forgetting that awesome reef tank. Let me know in the comments uh, which was your favourite scape. I know it's a common, commonly asked question of mine, but I am genuinely interested to see you know, what your guys' taste is. In fact, um, over the last three uh, videos, uh, let me know your favourite out of them all, and maybe I can do a, a super high-end production on, on that one most popular scape. So let me know in the comments. Okay, that's all for now. Take care, keep on scaping. Cheerio.